How you doing, guys? Steve Lav here. On this video here, I did a cleaning on it. Um, I didn't really need the coil cleaner. I used just, you know, my brush, and I hit it with the hose, and it come really clean. Sometimes I use coil cleaner. Sometimes I don't. If it needs clean coil cleaner, I'll use it. If I don't need it, I'm not using the stuff. It just foams up everywhere. But anyway, um, you know, at the end of the video, you'll see, you know, my pressures weren't, weren't right. There was something that was screwed up with it, you know. And, um... Yeah, I went upstairs, I pulled the cover off the unit, and uh, the TXV was just floating there in the air. It wasn't even, wasn't even tied down. So I put the black strap uh, straps on it temporarily um, till I can get, you know, the copper strap. And I, I did put some covering on it. But I am going to get the copper strap and go back. And I am going to get a blue pleated filter for the first floor and run that one. Um, and put some covering on the sunset bulb of the TXV because uh, my superheat was like 2530 on the first floor unit. I did run it. It was it was it was fucked up, you know. Um, but he was running those 25 all uh, uh, pleated filters, and this system is just undersized on the returns. You know, everybody thinks of the uh, them pleated filters are the greatest. They're gonna block all the dog hair. It, you can't run them if your system's undersized with the returns. You gotta run the blue filters. Uh, my, I know what my way. The returns are a flipping joke, and everybody thinks, oh, these pleated filters are the best. They suck. You can't run them if unless your system designed um, for them. If your system has enough returns, and you know you have enough um, return filter grills that are big enough to cover those uh, those white pleated filters, yeah, you can run them, but not up my way. Forget it. Half half the flipping returns is what I'm looking at all the time. So yeah, you're gonna see my video because my suction pressure's low all the time. Well, it's the assholes that install this shit up here. But anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And like I said, I'm gonna go back. I just wanna, uh, I'll, I'll post it. I'll post it what I did so far. Hell with it. Hopefully you enjoy it. And new cleaning. I got this one apart. Disconnects off. Got a mouse problem in here. He keeps keeps putting WD-40 in here. He's gonna put some block them holes off with some kind of electrical putty. I got the cabinet apart. There's some shit in here. Never been cleaned. I'm gonna take them both apart. Clean them both good. This coil's pretty dirty too. I'll pull them both apart and clean them at the same time. Get the other fan out of there. Unico um, units inside are um, little high velocity systems. Mismatch equipment. He's, I know he's running pleated filters. So we'll see what the suction pressure is like. With them pleated filters, probably not going to be good. Well, the mice have been living in there. All the fur and shit. I'm gonna try to clean that all the best I can. I got this all apart. Pretty flipping dirty. I'll hit it with my brush. I'll hit it with my, my dry brush for us and then the, the holes and the coil cleaner. Clean them up good. that brush will clean it right up. And then when I hit it with the hose it'll be done deal.
the miracle brush. Hit it with the holes, that's for sure. This back of this one's all metal. It's only got three sides, that's weird. I'm trying to pick up the big stuff before I hit it with the hose. Oil cleaner. I hit this one with the brush, it cleans up pretty good. I get the rest with the coil cleaner. Important to get under that compressor. There's a lot of shit that lives under there. Can't get out with a scraping. You'd be surprised how clean you can get it just with the flipping holes. This one don't really need coil cleaner. You can do a dry clean, is what I call it. Cobwebs and shit, basically, just. I got a coil cleaner in a truck, but this one don't really need it, so I put it on there. Take your brush and give this a little helping hand. It's all full of oil. He's been spraying flipping oil in here to keep the mice out. You can see it's all oily. That's why it's all uh, it's like that. You can feel it's kind of sticky and oily. that the one there yeah. 
This is all oily and shit from him spraying oil in here. I got in here with my brush, cleaned it the best I could. It's all oily, see it? I might have to use some coil cleaner on that. Not rocket science. Good enough for this neighborhood. Got them nice and clean. And just with the holes, you know. Sometimes you need the coil cleaner, sometimes you don't. And on this particular instance, I'm fine without it. See how the back of this coil is just a metal pan? And probably only like two and a half tons. I gotta check check them, but they're tiny, I think. That's why. That's not bad. I'll get these back together and give you a shot. So he's put a new contactor on there. Let's check the capacitor on this one. Should be a three, three thirty-five. And I'm going with a three there. I'm going with the thirty-five. This capacitor's a little weak. Two point seven seven. This should be two two eighty five minimum. Let me see the the compressor side. It's only reading three. I gotta change that capacitor. We'll check the new one here. 35. 35 and 3. That's what we need. I gotta change that one. Story thirty six. This one's good. I'll change that one there. Right, put some electrical putty in there, cover up them holes, no capacitor. Keep the mice out. Use. I suck cool, high charge. Take a little bit out. Superheat was flooding back. 
overcharged. You can see the compressor was starting to sweat a little bit. Not good. Alright, no super heat. I think it broke off right there, the thing just floating in the air there. I'm doing an expansion route. I don't have any of these in the truck. I'll just use some pull ties for now. And I'll have to get some of that, that strap and some of the insulation for it also. Gotta strap it on there good. Filter. 